ever get that feeling like, ah, uh, life's kind of testing you, seeing what you're made of. You know those moments when you have to decide if you're going to step up or back down? Oh, absolutely. Like those crossroads, you know? Exactly. And that's what we're diving into today. We're tackling courage with a little help from the Stoics. Always a good idea to have the Stoics in your corner. Right. So we've got this excerpt, and it dives into why the Stoics believed courage was the most essential virtue, even more than, like, temperance or justice. It's true. They really put it front and center. And one of the things I found really interesting was how they connected courage to facing challenges. Oh, yeah. They were big on that whole, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger idea. Exactly. Though maybe not in such a you know intense way. It wasn't about glorifying suffering. More like they saw hardship as, well, inevitable, part of life. Okay. So it's not about wanting bad things to happen. Right. It's more about how you deal with those things when they do happen. Because they will, unfortunately. So true. But I got to say, I'm not always great at that. Sometimes I just want to hide under the covers when things get tough. Does that make me like the opposite of courageous? Not at all. We all have those moments. The Stoics weren't superhuman, you know. They felt fear and anxiety just like the rest of us. The difference is they believed that courage wasn't about not feeling fear, but about acting despite that fear. Okay, that makes me feel a little better. So how do we actually do that? How do we tap into that stoic courage? Well, the excerpt actually starts with this really powerful line from the novel, All the Pretty Horses. It says, the world wants to know if you have cojones, if you are brave. Whoa, talk about a wake up call, right? Right, it's like the universe is asking, are you up for this? And the stoics believe that every choice we make, every action we take, is basically our answer to that question. So it's not just about like, you know, fighting dragons or whatever. Exactly. Courage shows up in the everyday stuff too, like speaking up for what you believe in, even when it's uncomfortable, or finally starting that creative project you've been putting off, or even just being honest with yourself and others. It's like all those little moments where you have to choose between taking the easy way out and like challenging yourself to be a little braver. Yes. And those small acts of courage, they add up over time. They shape who we become. That's actually really inspiring. It makes courage seem a lot more attainable, you know? Like, yeah. it's not this big abstract thing. It's about those small, everyday choices. Exactly. And the more we make those choices, the stronger that courage muscle gets. So next time you're facing a tough decision or feeling that resistance, ask yourself, what would the most courageous version of myself do in this situation? Ooh, I like that. It's like a little challenge we can give ourselves each day. Exactly. Embrace those moments of discomfort, those opportunities to step outside your comfort zone. Because that's where the real growth happens, right? Wow, this deep dive has really given me a new perspective on courage. It's not about being fearless, it's about acting, even when you are afraid. Couldn't have said it better myself. And who knows, you might surprise yourself with what you're capable of. I'm ready to find out. Huh? So to everyone listening, remember that question from all the pretty horses. Mind made of granite, Roman kingpin, philosophy's mechanic. Marcus done talk in the ruins of the forum, so solid as marble mine, free like a quarrel. In the Colosseum, clap of reason echo, serenity within, like the flight of a sparrow. Virtue carved deep, it's a disciplined aura. Roman road stretch, meditating on the flora. From the loop, turn the chaos to order Stoic eyes palm through the wounds and the slaughter Heard the whispers from the valleys to borders Life's but a blade, seek the wisdom of warriors In the library stacks, rolled up scrolls of meditations Face the plague, wrath the nature, Roman tribulations Men clash swords, but the mind remains placid Stoic thoughts run deep in a world so rapid On the battlefield, courage rides with the centaur Meditate at dawn for the day's emperor Still meets flesh, Marcus keeps his composure World might burn, but his heart's granted both Came from the loop, turn the chaos to order So a guy's calm through the wounds and the slaughter Heard the whispers from the valleys to borders Life's what a blade, seek the wisdom of warriors You gonna come after me, the reason why most of you can't do what you do You can keep getting knocked down, you keep quitting Because whatever your why is, it ain't stronger than the beat down you take it. Whatever the beat down, whatever life is throwing at you, whatever punches is blowing, you whatever's happening, it ain't that it ain't deep enough for you to wake up. Like you getting punched and you feel that pain and you like, ain't no need to get up. No, and I feel you. You need to stay down. Cause life gonna beat you. You talking about making millions? Life gonna beat you down. You talking about making millions, multi-millions, billions, life gonna beat you down. So so when you feel the pain and you get knocked down, stay down. But if you got a why that's deeper than your pain, 
Y'all, this is a little too young. Y'all look too young. When I was a kid, they used to buy this little bag for it, and it would weep a wobble, but it won't fall down. <laughs> you could hit that thing, and it'll go, and then she'll come right back up. When I think about my wife at MS, my man called, hey, E, can you do the gig? I'm like, yeah, when is it? What time? All I thought about was DD's MS. Put that in the bank. We might not even need that in our lifetime. Our kids, kids might need it. But because my wife got MS, my grandkid might end up getting MS. Put that in the bank. Put that in investment for my great. We, I'm on my great, great grandkids right now. That's where I'm at financially. Are you hearing what I'm saying? All right, let's go. I'm sorry. Sam, don't kill me. Without a vision, there's no direction. Without direction, there's no progress. Reason why you're struggling getting up because you don't have nothing to get up for. I got to clear my mind of some stuff, but when I get up there, I got to do what I got to do. Why? Because success is not a failing. It's a mindset. There is nothing more important to true growth than realizing that you are not the voice of the mind. You are the one who hears it. Choose your friends wisely. The fastest way to become better is to surround yourself with better people. Those who are free from attachment and ego are the ones who attain the highest state of consciousness. Bhagavad Gita Learn first, teach later. In the face of adversity, remember that diamonds are made under pressure. The pendulum of the mind oscillates between sense and nonsense, not between right and wrong. Carl Jung What they have done they will still do, although thou shouldst hang thyself. First, let it not trouble thee, for all things both good and evil come to pass according to the nature and general condition of the universe and within a very little while all things will be at an end. No man will be remembered. As now of Africanus, for example, and Augustus, it has already come to pass. Then secondly, fix thy mind upon the thing itself. Look into it, and remembering thyself, that thou art bound nevertheless to be a good man. And what it is that thy nature requireth of thee as thou art a man, be not diverted from what thou art about, and speak that which seemeth unto thee most just. Only speak it kindly, modestly, and without hypocrisy. The Sea of Galilee flows into the Jordan River. And the Jordan River flows into the Dead Sea. Now, here's something about the Sea of Galilee and the Jordan River. They have all type of fish and plants that grow. It's vibrant, it's thriving with life. The Dead Sea is salty, and it's so salty it has high degree and density of buoyancy that, that you float, just jumping, you just float automatically. But there's no life in the Dead Sea. That's why they call it the Dead Sea. There's no life there. It's an inlet. But you know what? It's the difference between the two, and life shows us things. It's not an outlet. It doesn't feed into anything. It doesn't give water to anything. It only receives water. There are a lot of people, ladies and gentlemen, that are takers. They're inlets. But they're dead. They're dead inside. They're not giving anything. Their lives are salty, tasteless life, non-contributing life. They're the walking, breathing dead. How many of you know people just take and don't give anything back? These are miserable people. They're miserable people to be around. These takers. The act of giving makes you more alive and able to sustain life. See, when you are going through life relentlessly, seeking out what is it you're supposed to give? What service are you supposed to give that you're supposed to provide, that you're supposed to bring? That's very important. Service is the rent we pay for the space we take up on earth. 
So decide now, whatever you have, whatever this is that you have in you, that you're going to give. And you're going to give like you've never given before. Why? It gives your life, life to give. It brings out more in you. The more you give, the more you realize you can give. The more you share, the more you love, the more compassion you show. What a time when we have homeless people. The time when we have young people who have no sense of purpose and direction. At a time when people are feeling powerless with all the massive... La it's okay. They are only human. What people say when they are angry aren't things they mean. They regret it often. Forgive angry people. Whoever does wrong wrongs himself. Whoever does injustice does it to himself making himself evil. In vino veritas, in wine there is truth. Pliny the Elder. Everyone has three faces. Firstly, the one we show to the world and strangers. Secondly, the one we show to family, spouses, and close friends. And thirdly, the one we show only to ourselves. Life is far from over, but it's very short too. The path to success will leave you calloused, bruised, and very tired. It will also leave you empowered. David Goggins Does someone bathe hastily? Do not say that they do so badly, but hastily. Does someone drink a great deal of wine? Do not say that they do this badly, but that they drink a great deal. For until you understand their motives, how do you know that what they do is bad? Understand this, and you will never receive convincing impressions, but assent to quite different ones. If everything's all together, if I don't have any opposition, if nobody works against me, if nobody tells me no, if I don't run out of money, if everybody loans me what I want and give me what I want and agree with me and support me, I'd like to have that dream. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not that kind of party. The part of getting what you want, this dream you have, say it's possible, and don't let nobody turn you around. Don't let circumstances turn you around. Don't let hard times turn you around. It's okay. Whatever you're experiencing, you know that this too shall pass, that you have the capacity and the ability to make it happen. You got a sense of entitlement. I deserve this and whatever I have to do in order to make it happen. I'm willing to step up and to face life and grab it in a collar and say, give it up, because it's mine. See, most people are wimps, ladies and gentlemen. They're attentive and they don't believe that they deserve what they want anyhow, so they convince themselves, I'm not supposed to have it. Whatever goal that you have in mind, I want that to be a goal that will challenge you, something that will make you stretch. It was Osborne who said, unless you attempt to do something beyond that, which you've already mastered, you will never grow. What is it that you looked at at some point in time and you decided that you couldn't do it? That you talk yourself out of it? Whatever it is, bring it back out there. How are you going to do it? That will come to you in due time. So you don't get in life what you want, ladies and gentlemen. You get in life what you are, not what you want. And see, the good news is that we can always become more by working to develop ourselves. So the first process of making this your decade, you've got to begin to take a look at your life and look at where are you right now? What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What gives your life a sense of fulfillment, a sense of joy? What does a full, rich life means to you?